Hello everyone, I'm Baruffy1322 and in this video I'm going to be showing the fastest fully upgraded coupes around a circuit and the best cars to use for races. For the full story about what I did, check the annotation on the screen or the link in the description for the intro video, but otherwise let's get straight into it. So the slowest coupe in the entire game is the Oracle. Now there are two versions of the Oracle to choose from, this is the older version. So the older version you can't actually buy on the uh, on the in-game website in GTA Online, you have to find it on the streets, but the, there isn't really much of a point to doing so, because with a 113.5 it's reasonably far off the pace of the car, even just ahead of it, but also of the entire class in general. So it's not going to do anything special for you, it's just a bit of a bog standard car. And just ahead of it, in 10th place, is the newer version of the Oracle. So both the Oracles are at the back of the pack for this class. Now the newer version is 1.3 seconds quicker than the older version, which is a reasonably large difference. They do feel reasonably similar in the corners, but the newer version just has a little bit more power. But again, overall, these kind of lap times aren't that great for this class. They aren't going to be doing anything special for you. It's just another bog standard car really, and it's certainly not going to help you that much in races. So just ahead of the Oracle in 9th place is the Sentinel. Now the Sentinel is again quite similar, you know, all of the cars around this section are quite similar. Now this is the convertible version of the Sentinel. With a 112.203, it's only one tenth of a second quicker than the newer version of the Oracle. And it, it, it feels quite similar as well, you know, quite underpowered, not too bad in the corners, but nothing special. Now. The, the Coupes class is pretty much full of cars that have different variations. So we've seen two different versions of the Oracle, we've seen the first type of Sentinel which was the convertible version, and now we're seeing the first type of Felon which is the Felon GT, or the two-door version of the Felon. Now the Felon GT gets a 1 minute 11.9, so it's only a couple of tenths of a second quicker than the Sentinel, and again all of the cars around this area are nothing special. They're quite close together in terms of lap time, but they just don't feel, they feel completely underpowered for the class. So nothing special from that. And in seventh place, just ahead of the Felon GT, is the F620. Now the F620 is pretty much the same story again, with a woman 11.9 or two, it's less than one tenth of a second quicker than the Felon GT, and again, nothing that special. So all of the cars around in this area from 7th all the way down to 10th have been very, very close on lap time. Uh, and they, they all just feel too underpowered, you know. They're, they're not too bad uh, in terms of handling, but they, they're, not, they're way off the pace in the, in the Coupes class. So just ahead of the F620 in 6th place is the Cognoscenti Cabrio. Now the Cognoscenti Cabrio does feel quite nice in the corners. It, it can be a little bit difficult to get turned in, but it feels well balanced. With a 1 minute 11.6, again it's not that much quicker than what we've just seen, but it, it does feel a little bit better balanced than the others, and it does have a little bit more power on the straights than the, than the cars that we've just seen. So although it's off the pace still, it, it's a better prospect really. So in 5th place we have the next version of the Sentinel, which is the Sentinel XS. Now this is the hard top version of the Sentinel, the non-convertible version, with a 1 minute 10.7, this is significantly quicker than what we've seen. So the Sentinel XS takes a big jump in lap time there, and it, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels very similar to the regular Sentinel in terms of uh, handling, and in fact it is pretty much exactly the same. But once you modify it, it does get a higher level of acceleration, and that's what makes it get that quicker lap time. So the Sentinel XS is better than the regular Sentinel. So in fourth place, we have the Jackal. With a 1 minute 9.4, that's another big chunk of lap time taken off what we've just seen from the Sentinel XS. And the Jackal feels really, really nice in the corners. Now this is really the first car that you can choose that will be able to compete in a race really. Anything below this is going to be too far off the pace for a high level race. So with a 1 minute 9.4 the Jackal is quite a decent car, feels quite good around the corners, not too bad on the straights either. So in third place we have the Exemplar. Now the Exemplar always used to be the quickest coupe by a long long way, but then we had the spoiler update which made spoilers increase traction and the Exemplar doesn't get a spoiler. So with the 1 minute 8.7, you know, it, it, it is a little bit quicker than the Jackal. It does feel nice on the straight. It's quite good around the corners as well. And it, it's quite a nicely balanced rear wheel drive four door car. Um, but it, it just lacks that overall pace to make it up into the top spots. But you can still definitely be competitive with it. And if you prefer driving it because of the style that it gives you, then that's absolutely fine. 
So yeah, the Exemplar in third, and in second place, just missing out on the top spot, is the Felon. So again, another car that has a different variation, this is the four-door version of the Felon. Now this is the second quickest at this time, the second quickest four-door car in the entire game. With a 1 minute 8.3, we're almost half a second quicker than what the Exemplar managed, and that's really because it gets the spoiler. The Felon has a little bit more acceleration than our top-placed car, but a little bit less traction, and that's what uh, that's what makes it uh, get this, this second place. So it does feel very nice in the corners, the Felon, um, and certainly with it being a four-door car as well, you know, it, it would be good in free roam. Uh, that just to point out, the, the Sultan is the quickest four-door car. You can check that on the uh, in the sports video. But yeah, the, the Felon is, is a very good all-rounder. But in first place for the Coupes is the Zion. Now the Zion also has two different variations. So, you know, the Coupes class has been full of cars with two different variations. The Felon and the Felon GT. The Sentinel, the Sentinel XS. But the Zion and the Zion Cabrio are exactly the same. It doesn't matter which one you choose between the Zion or the Zion Cabrio, you will be able to get the exact same lap times. So it's entirely up to you. Go for whichever one you feel is best. Now I know someone's going to ask me in the comments anyway, even though I've said this, but I do want to make it clear, both versions of the Zion are exactly the same. So with the 1 minute 7.9, the Zion is easily our quickest uh, our quickest coupe, and it, it, it's all because of the traction that it has. It has a lot more traction than all of the other cars in the class, and as long as you use that traction to its fullest around the corners and really carry the speed through, it will give you the quickest lap times. Again, you know, the, the top four cars in this class really are open to whatever you want. You know, you can choose any four and you still be able to compete at least, certainly with the top three. Um, but the Zion is overall the quicker car to choose. So, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope it's helped. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this down below. It is quite a close class, this one. The Coupes is definitely the closest class from the first place car all the way to the last place, it is the closest class in the entire game. So let me know your thoughts about this class down below, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and be, feel free to subscribe uh, if you want to see future videos and future different classes, and also check out previous classes as well. So thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really do appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you next time.